Good morning, guys. Look at this bloody weather. We're heading down to Perko's place. Our old Cockney mate, Chris Perkins. How you doing, brother? I'm a Cockney, not a Tom. <laughs> Stop and get some brekkie, hey? Some meat at least. Good old meat bracelet. Smoked pork. Hello, Sabade. How day? Sit down. Okay. How no. Road 13 guys, it is a narrow road, it is undergoing upgrades at the moment but in places it's still narrow, you're sharing it with um, the scooters, the bikes, they're lucky to be going 60-70 kilometres an hour so you really have to, do have to be careful. What you got to be careful of are those little bloody electric scooters, you know the, the things with wheels on them no bigger than bloody preams they're doing 20 30 kilometers tops and they're allowed on these roads i don't know if they're allowed but they are hey, one hand up because it's raining and they're out in the bloody middle of the road you're coming along doing 80k mate i'm ranting because this guy just scared the shit out of me just the closing rate on him uh, he just no fear for his life like road 13 it's the major route from the top of bloody Lao to the bottom you're sharing it with big semi trailers and sleeper buses and <laughs> oh my and all of a sudden here's this dude doing 20 kilometers an hour in the middle of the road on a bloody electric scooter I don't know why I think it's only two hour drive, it's closer to three. This is the village Chris lives in. Uh, just picking him up and we'll go out to the farm. Sabade, <laughs> thank you. Gup <laughs> Jay. He's got a house just up here. Hello. Here he is, Mr. Chris Perkins. How you doing, mate? Good. How you going? I'm going good to see you. You want to be on video, Steve? Uh, you can say no. Yeah. <laughs> Not a cup of tea, it's not, it doesn't really worry me to be honest. Um, this is Steve, he's just new into the country, too, guys. Uh, he's from Melbourne, Oz. He's um, about half an hour up the road, are you? Uh, an hour, an hour up the road, living in the villages and absolutely loving it. Loving every second of it. So, here we go. Here's the first. This is the liquid super duper pooper applicator. Oh, no. Okay, so this uh, is towed behind the back of a Kubota trailer <clears throat> and on the back of the Kubota trailer you'd have okay. one of these IBCs full of the liquid poop and then you just put a generator and a pump, pump it through, pisses out the holes. What's that, four metres wide? Uh, yes, yeah. two, two, two is Co one length, so it's two metres each side. Covers a good area, mate. Yes. And then you just drag it along, and then you turn around and come back, and you. So, and what fertilizer is this? Is this the, the from this, the fish dam? This is the uh, fish 
poo. The fish F poo. F -E sauce. Yeah. And what's the machine called again? The uh, liquid super duper pooper applicator. Okay. Yeah. Google that, guys. I'm sure you'll find it. <laughs> so these, you just load these up on the back of a tractor, do you? Yeah, well, obviously these ones we ain't moving anywhere. But These um, are the fish poo sauce so, here. That's the yeah. fertiliser. So, yeah. so what it will be is we'll put the, 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 the container on and then pump from one to the other. Uh, so pump. what we're doing at the right now is just to store it. Okay. we've emptied okay. out the uh, pond. So you'd put an empty tub up on the tractor yes. and then pump it into it. Yes. Because that was my question. How do you bloody get it up on there? Yeah. When it's empty. Yeah. Um, just for some of the newer subscribers, people yep. who don't know who Chris Perkins the Cockney is. Yeah. He's not a pom. No. He's not a whinging no, no, pom. He's not a, a whinging pom. He's a bloody Cockney. But just a brief history. Very brief, mate. I know how you yeah. like to talk. <laughs> history on who you are. Okay. Uh, and why Lao, mate? Yeah, what are you doing here? Okay, brief history. <clears throat> I used to live in New Zealand before that. I lived in America before like, I lived in the UK. So I've emigrated three times. I emigrated to Lao because I met a guy, sorry, a newer guy who I used to, uh, we both lived in the same commune back in New Zealand. And um, so I was around 60 and looking for something different to do in life. So I contacted him and said, where are you? He said, I'm in Lao. So that's why I'm in Lao. Right. So how long have you been here? Got to be 17 years now. It I'm would. getting close. Yeah. Somewhere between yeah. 16 and yeah. 17. I've done the 15 years <laughs> yeah, in Lao 16. and I've done the 16 years in Lao. <laughs> now we can tie the 17 years in Lao. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why? What made you stay? You know, your mate was here, obviously. Came you came word. here. Yep. The wife. The wife. That was it? That's it. You can find wives anywhere in the yes, world, mate. Yes, you can, but not one as good as that. <laughs> no, it's pretty good, and I'm pretty lucky myself, actually. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Have you ever thought, what have I done to deserve this? Oh, every day, mate. Well, to be honest. Most days. Most days. <laughs> <laughs> they are beautiful people. They really are, but, you know, not everybody is perfect. You have your good days and your bad days, but it, it is like that now. You know, it's just what have we done, you know, to deserve this? Have you ever thought about moving anywhere else with your wife? You know, you, you say um, it was your wife that made you stay. Surely there's other things, you know, that... I could have gone back to New Zealand, but there is no way I could have the life I have here back in New Zealand because... Um, I'm 76 now, so the idea of going and getting a job, working for someone else, doing what I was told. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. was never any good at that when I was 30, 40, 50, or whatever. So the idea of having to do that, because you just, you've just you got to justify the money they're paying you. And uh, I, I know people have run boss, uh, jo uh, people who've run companies, and for every dollar they give you, they've got to, you have got to earn them $4 of all the openings so you know if i want to earn um and, and the price of housing because when i i left i just sold everything to, and that or gave away everything and just stuck it in my pocket yeah that's what did and uh, to go back there would be impossible oh yeah uh, it'd be near impossible for me to go back there now yeah, you know, it was fine before COVID, you know, because yeah. I, I still had my foot in the door. I still had yeah. a job six months of the year. Hmm. But now with that gone and my age, you know, I'm in my late 50s now. And still a youngster. But it's still the the job of setting yourself back up yep. there, yep. getting that income, yep. that good income that it yep. takes to actually survive yep. in a Western country yep. comfortably. You know, it's not just a matter of just getting a job. Yeah. You know, like yourself, I sold up everything and, you know, invested in here. Invested has mean investing my life here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right, are we going to look at the solid fertiliser now, are we? Uh, yeah. Well, there's plenty of piles of that around. Um, so, like there, for instance. All right. Yeah. So, this is... Um, What's this pig shit? Yep. 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 So. Good shit? Smell it. 
I had visions of you ramming that in my face then. <laughs> I'm not that kind of guy. Yeah. Okay guys, now, you remember this, <clears throat> my earth house? It fell over, mate. It, <laughs> yes, well it got blown over. Wow. It got blown over. How long's it been down? Ah, uh, three, three weeks or so. Okay. Yeah, and so the wall fell down. So this is what happens when the turret, when you don't protect the bottom of the beams ah, right, the termites. Okay. so they chew the end the bottoms out <coughs> and, and the it just gets hold of it and right. falls over pushes it over yeah. Yeah. so what i'm going to do here i'm just going to take these screws out so right now with a screw out all oh, right yeah the screw i can in just there. wheel that along ah okay without this having without to turn rotating so i'll just take the screw out of this side as well Okay, so we're going to wheel this along. Did you build this or the son in law, mate? No, this was me. I designed my build. You built? So what I'm going to do is get one of you to hold that. Shoveling shit, mate. Yeah, I'm a shit shoveler from way back. Okay. Uh, That'll do. Give us a demo. Right. So I've just got to put that screw back in. Unless it's the other screw is holding it. Is in. that too rich to be able to grow something directly in, mate? Because well, it just looks like really good bloody soil, doesn't it? It, it is, so hold that second, I've just got to put the screw in the other side. Okay. Uh, okay. Fucking sandy. It feels sandy. Yeah. Does, it doesn't feel shitty. Looks like a uh, plain mix. So I don't pick my nose now. <laughs> <laughs> ah, she's not, not gripping. But not biting, mate. Not biting. This is going the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. So it drops out that way. So actually, I can just pull that back a little bit. I can just turn it. Ah, that's okay. 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 So as you go along, it yeah. just drop a little pile. We're just having technical difficulties with the screw at the moment. Yeah. Uh, it does work, it does. Oh yeah, so this is how it's made. You've got wooden blocks here, hardwood blocks. Yep. There's a bearing in each side and uh, a steel pipe that goes through there. There's a steel plate welded onto the pipe and it's bolted to yep. Yep. this tube. PVC so this is wheelbarrow pipe. wheels, bearings I got from the local store. Oh, these wheel bearings? The, you know the wheel bearings that cracked out when you were on the road? Yeah. I got these from the local store, dollar fifty each. Thanks, Same mate. bearing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Fun. Okay. Enough of that. So, what I've done? <clears throat> So made a few notes. There's the road trip that I took from uh, London to Tokyo and back again, which included the trip to Laos, yeah. which is in 72, 73. Uh, there's the time I spent in the States and the time in New Zealand. So all I've done is I've just put a little note of something that's different that most people don't do. Yeah. yeah. So that's the idea. Right on. Where would you like me to start? Wherever you like, mate. Okay. You're the storyteller. So, okay, so we'll start with the road trip. Um, we started off in North London on this bus. There was nine different nationalities on this bus. Had about 28 people. On what it. year are we talking about? 72. 72. September 72. And uh, we on the bus, I went from uh, North London to uh, New Delhi, and that was... Uh, five weeks and seven thousand kilometers, seven thousand miles. Okay, 
Um, so a couple of things that interesting I thought was um, we went through Iran and Iraq and one of the times we stopped we pulled off the side of the road and there was one guy on the bus who had blonde hair so we thought just for a joke we'd auction him off and there was about half a dozen of these men standing around him putting that and then <laughs> it started to get a little serious so we said to the driver that they it, yeah they, they were thought bidding they for were him. oh yes yes yeah they were bidding for him for what though what did they want well, him what for? was in their mind we didn't actually ask them but we knew what they were after hmm. yes what young was young that man. these young. guys are, yes. are bidding on a, a young bloke yes <laughs> young, young bloke. <laughs> no he thought it was a hoot because he knew that we just had to start he, the engine up and yeah, we were going. yeah yeah um, we had another a spot bother in uh, Turkey. Um, we were driving down a main road, two, two lane road, and um, a truck came up the side of us and he just got the cab past there. All the rest of the truck was behind him and he just pulled over, <clears throat> forced us off the road. Uh. <clears throat> Fortunately, there was somewhere to go. I mean, there was two English guys, big boys looking for bother. So they said, right, let's go and get them. So for about an hour, we chased this truck <laughs> down the road. <laughs> and then we got to a point where he pulled off, right? And those guys, right, let's go. And he looked around and everybody in the bus was asleep. <laughs> I thought, mm, maybe not a good idea. Because yeah. they don't know how, what these guys are carrying, knives yeah. and the rest of it. So that, that was that. Um, it was a... Uh, about 1971 there was a war between India and Pakistan and so the border was only open one day a week I think it was Thursday but I might be wrong on that. so the driver decided in his infinite wisdom that he was going to get a jump on the queue so he set off down the road towards the border only of course there's no signs that you can read there's no no lights or anything so he turned off down this side road and came to a cul-de-sac and it was a gun emplacement and there was three howitzers and a whole bunch of soldiers standing there looking at us you know wow uh, but they thought it was funny yeah they thought it was a hoot yeah so it was no problems it was oh yeah yeah Falang, you know or whatever the pakistani word for that is yeah and so um we turned around and we finally got to the border yeah i went through the border um and then we got to new delhi and that's where i left the bus was this just a public bus or this was an organised tour it was bus? An organi it was an organised, there was a thing called the Hippie Trail in those days. Yeah. And these uh, these guys bought these old Bedford buses. Okay. And they rented out spots on the bus. Ah. I think it was about £60 at the time to go from London to New Delhi. Yeah. yeah. Right. So there wasn't a, a huge, great deal of tourism then it was just people like yourself like the hippie yeah. hippie trail yeah. in that area yeah. the yeah. the route you were taking yeah. so it wouldn't have been a common thing for these pakistanis and that to oh to, they would to, they would not have seen uh people like us at all yeah so um we couldn't speak pakistani urdu and they couldn't speak english uh, no, they bothered. just we yeah, understood there. it was just we were a... the Indian Army, so they weren't so bothered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, from there, I uh, travelled down through India to Goa. I spent two months on the beach in Goa. <clears throat> it was about, <clears throat> excuse me, about 50 uh, people like me just hanging out on the beach. Uh, and living on the beach. Living on the beach, literally. Living on the beach. We, we bought a map and we'd get some bamboo poles and put matted palm leaves on the roof. It yeah. never rained. And we'd just go into the local village to buy food. Right. Yeah. So we just sat there. On so the there beach. was public toilets there to go? Pardon? Where would you go to the toilet, mate? Where you'd shower, uh, shower well, in the ocean, of course. Yeah. But. And, um, well, there was some rock promenade. It, this was called Vagatar Beach, by the way. Um, and you just go and shit out in the rocks. Okay. Yeah. And piss somewhere yeah and there was one um stream coming in and everybody put their little water pot underneath it did you have long hair then i didn't you i've didn't? never had long hair no never been able to do that ah. 
Okay. No, you're yeah. just painting a picture of yeah. Uh, <laughs> a me vlogging. Uh, yeah, no, no. a dead set hippie. No. Yeah, li oh, living yeah, on the here, beach. Here. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean. Yeah. Just I got your, pretty your travels living on the yeah. beach. Yeah. I got pretty zonked on that beach. I have to tell you. Yeah. yeah. Um. What on? LSD. Uh, hash. 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 Okay. Yeah. We got uh, into uh, Kabul, and it was a guy went out into the town and bought a kilo of fresh breast hash for thirteen dollars and he just walks on the bus here you go here you go here you go hand it out like cadbury chocolate mate yes <laughs> yes 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 i was a bit of a mess for quite a while yeah. and the funny thing was this is afghanistan when the king was still on the throne right yeah and so no dramas no uh, but no, well, I say nobody carrying guns. A lot of guys carried guns, but nobody was pointing them at you. And everybody thought it was a hoot. You got all these hippies coming through um, uh. Afghanistan, and uh, so there was never any trouble. It was always just a, it was a lovely, it's a different world, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, it was, we went from one end. It was Herat down to uh, Kabul, and then out through the so, oh yeah, through the Peshawar, uh, through the Khyber Pass. Yeah. Looking down into the Peshawar Valley, that's there was like a fort at the bottom, and that's where the termination of all the steam engines in those days. So it was like going back to the 19th century. Wow. Mm. Man, if only you had a video camera in those days. I had a whole lot of pictures, lost them in my brother's yeah. basement when it flooded. Unfortunately. It, it was no problem to be carrying hash uh, in that. It's no problem. Nobody cares. How would you? How did you smoke it back then? Did you roll it up I in a cigarette I, I, through I, I a pipe? I can't, honestly can't remember. But yeah. I guess There's so I many different some... ways people do smoke yeah, ash. Yeah, I, I think maybe I bought a little pipe or something. Yeah, yeah. I can't honestly remember how I did it. because I know some of them drop a bit on the end of a cigarette yes. and they spot it through yes. a straw yes. and yes. I've done that before, yes. yeah. Yes. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah. were the days, yeah. yeah it's... Um, very yeah. uncommon these days, you know, hash and hash oil and, you know. Yes. <clears throat> but um, they used to, they, they wore leather trousers and they would run through the uh, fields and the, the resin would stick to the trousers ah. and they would roll and then, their trousers. Right, they just scrape it off. Yeah. That's a ah. little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a mango tree, right? Yeah. But look at the fruit and look at this. This is the next crop. That's flowering now. That's right. Yeah. This will do three crops in a year. Okay. Yeah. That's weird. I... Three crops at... in a year. That's what a particular variety. So it's bearing, flowering yes. at the same time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. So it's still a nice mango to eat. Well, you had some. Yeah. Do you have any of those red mangoes out here, mate? I don't. Don't. They're bloody nice mango. Our goat shed. Tree fell down. <laughs> so the next ah, one is yeah. another shed. Smashed it. Smashed it. Um. So after that, I went down to, uh, as I say, went down to Goa um, on the train. Sat on the beach. After two months, I thought I'm going to have to get off of here or I'm going to spend the rest of my life on this beach. So I got on the train and went to Kolkata. It was 44 hours. And me being me, I travelled third class. I always travel third yeah. class. And uh, so I didn't book a bed. So where I was sitting was somebody else's bed. So I went and sat in a, uh, a, a laid down on a luggage rack that didn't have any luggage on it. <clears throat> and I made the mistake of when I took my shoes off, I was lying next to the wall with my pack sort of hit, you know, secure. But I put my shoes here and some bastard in the middle of the night stole my shoes. Woke up with no shoes. Yes. So, of course, Calcutta, I got there and kind of hot footed it to the nearest uh, shoe shop to get uh -huh. my shoes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, in Calcutta, I went and uh, to the Burmese Airways and asked a young fellow behind the counter and he said uh, okay so you're flying to Burma okay so um, are you a student 
I said, no. He says, do you have a student card? I said, no. He says, okay, it's five bucks for the student card. You get 50% off your airfare ticket. Wow. Yes. I can't remember 50%. what the airfare is. 50%. You're a student. Yes. The boss has... The boss has arrived with all the goodies to baby. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, okay, so... I went to Burma. I was there for a week. <clears throat> they were flying because by count planes. Burma, which is me and Mar these, my Mar yeah. these days, yeah. Um, and there was uh, three flights a week, twenty seats on the flight. So at any one given time, there was sixty tourists, or even not even that, because of business people as well. That was it. That was all the flight in and out, and that's the wow. only way to get in and out in those days. So there was no land borders. No, it was only no. flights in. Yes. Well, okay. the, the generals have run the place since the mid '60s. Right. They, yeah. They weren't that bothered. Still about a lot of trouble there. going on there now, Lots isn't it? Trouble. Yeah. So yeah. I I I, carry, I covered a, a thousand miles in that one week. I got on the train, went up to um, uh, Mandalay, <clears throat> got in a boat in Mandalay, came down the Irrawaddy, back on the train back and um, there were a couple of things I remember significantly about that and one was um, in the <clears throat> those days maybe they still do <clears throat> the old women used to smoke the cigars and so they had these little aluminium bowls and the, the uh, cigar between their fingers and between these fingers was the the, the bowl to catch the ash and they puffing on the cigars. Ah, yes. so it just, they just wait sit. till it falls off into yes. the bowl that they yes. hold them with their third yes. finger or whatever. Yes. Travelling all through Burma, how did you go as far as the language barrier? You know, in these countries, like <coughs> everywhere, you know. Yep. Um, Burma was a, a British Empire. Part of the British Empire, there was always someone spoke English. Okay, okay. <coughs> yeah. Is that oh, still any... the same today? I, I've never, I've only been into um, the Shan district up in Taki, like crossing from <clears> the <throat> Shanghai area. Yep. Yeah. Don't know. Um, all I know, I guess there are some people that speak English. Yeah. Um, depending on where you are, if you're in the Philippines, I've never been to the Philippines, there's a lot of people speaking English. Oh, yeah. There. Yeah, there is. You'll have um, no problem in the Philippines. Uh, in Laos, in the city centres, in the tourist areas, you'll find people that speak English. You come out here, mm. um, and I know in this village there's two guys that speak English. You're one of them? No. Uh, <laughs> the <locals>. There's three then. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So from time, <clears throat> they're both connected to the, the family in a sort of distant way. Um, and so we get together sometimes and have a chat yeah. about this, that and the other. Yeah, you'll have no problem in Pianchen, Phong Bien, no. Luang Phadang, but as soon as you get out into the yep. rural areas, yep. yeah. And some of them do surprise you. The the least educated looking person will just come out fluent English, and yeah, yeah, but yeah, or, that or, doesn't happen very often, though. Yeah, but I mean, even uh, even the sketchy stuff. And by the way, we are being persisted on it now. Do you want to stop? Yeah. And the other thing <clears throat> was they're pretty sketchy about women being around monks, and this boat trip must have been about half a day. And this woman, 30 year old attractive woman, and she never took her eyes off this monk. He just sat there doing his reading and all the rest of it, and he completely oblivious to it. And she never took her eyes off him for one second. Why is that? Is she never seen a monk before? I or? don't know what was going through her head, but it was just that. You know how some things in life stick with you? some visions yeah. stick with you well that was one of those that stuck with me i just um, um, was she burmese or was yeah, she yeah, she yeah, okay yeah yeah, yeah. Ah. yeah. so anyway that was that was myanmar and then um i took off um out of myanmar 